Anybody know that if God did it before, he's God enough to do it again? That he's big enough to do it again? I need about 3,000 people who have tasted and seen that the Lord is good to open up your mouth and release a sound of worship all over this room. Father, we thank you that you're God enough to do it again. I've seen you do it and you're going to do it again. Let's raise that. Hey, I've seen you move. You move the mountains and I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way when there was no way and I believe I'll see you do it. Let's go. I'll see you move. Raise the sound. You move the mountain. Oh. I believe. Father, we trust you. I'll see you do it. You're the God, God that makes ways. Made a way. When there was no way. When there was no I way. Believe. I believe. I'll see you do it. I'll see you do it. Hey. I'll see you. Ways. When there was no way, I believe I'll see you. I'll see you do it. Hey, I'll see you move. Come on, right. You move the mountain. Hey, and I believe you've got enough. I see you do it. You laid away. When there was no way. Begin to wave your hands in the presence of the king. Just begin to wave those hands if you know that it's happening right now. We've seen you do it, and God, you're big enough to do it again. Hey, hey. Said I'm seeing you, I'm seeing you more. Hey, you move the mountains, and I believe. Hey, I'm seeing you do it again. You made a way. I'll see you do it again. I'll see you do it again. Anybody believe it? I'll see you do it again. Oh. oh, oh. About the goodness of Jesus. I'll see you do it again. Oh, yeah. he's done for me. Yeah. My soul cries out. I'll see Hallelujah. you do it again. From a little boy yeah. in the house of a single mama yeah. in Cincinnati yeah. to this very day. I've watched God move a mountain. Yes, 
yes, over and over yes, again, over and over I'll again. See If there are any mothers in here who ever had to get on your knees and pray, Jesus help my baby. I don't know if they're going to make it today, but you stayed on your knees and you prayed, and you even had to shed some tears, and you lifted up your hands to Jesus, even though you had some fears. But you gave your baby over to the Lord, and you trusted the Lord at his word, and he turned their whole life around. So you might as well give the Lord a sound, a shout, a praise. If he answered your prayer, you saw him do it again. Hey. Yeah. This is my confidence, you never fail me yet. Are there any mothers in here that can say the Lord has never failed you? Is there anybody watching that knows that the Lord has never failed you? He's never failed. He's never failed. He's never failed. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Somebody needs to give him glory. You know he never failed you yet. Hey! Somebody lift your hand.
Somebody give the Lord Jesus a praise right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. your relentless love that saved my soul so I give you praise cause you made me whole I'll sing a new song to Jesus I'll sing a new praise to my Savior he's been so good he brought me to a new place. He brought me to a new place. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll speak through your word. Be glorified in your word that we are closer to you when this moment is over than we were when it first began. We love you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Give the Lord a great praise as you take your seat. after me. It's coming after me. This is a new song. Relentless. And it won't let go. And it won't let go of me. Anybody know you're a recipient of Relentless love. Thank you, worship team. What kind of love is this? What kind of love runs after us when we're not even obedient? What kind of love is this that we are recipients of? Tell somebody, scoot over. Because there's other people trying to get in, and I heard there's people standing up in the back, and Praise God. There are people in the overflow. Everybody in the overflow, uh, we love you. Want to come over there and hug your neck. And can we celebrate our, our overflow right now? And Love y'all. But if you're standing up in the back, please, y'all scoot in so somebody can sit next to you. Scoot in so folk can scoot in a little bit. Y'all like, I'm not moving. I need my space because... <laughs> The way my corn is set up on my pinky toe, I don't need nobody stepping on my situation. The relentless love on this toe. <laughs> relentless love. And it won't let go of me. Small room. There were eight people 
in the basement of a church and I preach like this in there. Yeah, right. There was no sound, there was no lights. It was just me, eight kids, and Jesus. We haven't set up and wrote out a six-month strategy of growth. We prayed and said, God, show up. Yeah. Establish your church so that your name is great. Heal people so they know that Jesus is real. And all of the haters and people that don't want to see us succeed and the people that are afraid of change, touch their heart so that your name is made great. That's all I care about. We didn't come here as a career move. We came because Jesus told us to. And I'm going to stay as long as he tells me to. And we're going to pray and preach and prophesy. And we're going to see miracles. I feel like shouting. And I need somebody to get out of them pews and get in these aisles. Because this is a miracle. I'm not supposed to... wildest dreams. I never thought God would do anything like this, mama. When you were working full time and going to college at night after my daddy left us, but you kept me at Bethel Baptist Church directing the choir. Every church play, every Bible study, every revival, and I was mad, but now I'm glad because what you sowed has come to pass and God let you live long enough to see it. You only got one child, but all you need is one to change the world. Pastor Todd, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hey. Yes! 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 Yes!
watching. We don't want to embarrass them. We don't want people to think we get out of control. But I am the product of a mother that wouldn't stop praying. And every time the devil showed up, she would step on his head by praying. Guys, guys, stop it. We need to calm down. We want you guys to know one thing. If the devil keeps messing with you as your pastor, I just have three words and one command. And if you do this, things will change. Step on it! Step on it! Step, step on it! Step on it, step on it. Y'all sit down. Y'all scaring the neighbors. Please sit down now. AQ, is that a relentless church shirt? We got relentless church shirts and other items outside after service grab something let people know you're a part of a relentless move of God y'all better sit down unless y'all want to step on it. stop sit down unless you're sure you want to step on it Come on, guys. It's late. I need to preach. It's our first Sunday. 
maybe that's what the Holy Ghost wants, is for us to step on it. Step on, step on the devil. Step on. In the name of Jesus. He's got no authority. Yeah. He's got no authority. John chapter 2. John chapter 2. You need to. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Pastor Daniel, go on down the steps now. Don't start nothing, won't be nothing. Somebody needs to. Stop letting the devil walk in and out of your life. Let that devil know your house belongs to Jesus. Your family belongs to Jesus. Your mind belongs to Jesus. This church belongs to Jesus. Step on. Your future belongs to Jesus. Hey, 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 hey. John chapter two. John chapter 2 John chapter 2 I want to take a moment and give honor to every member of Redemption Church who has been faithful to serve the visions of Pastor Ron and Hope Carpenter over the past 27 years in any capacity. We want to celebrate Pastor Ron and Hope, their leadership, and as we transition officially today from Redemption to Relentless. It would be dishonorable not to give honor and deference to the founders and leaders that have brought us this far. So I want to honor Redemption Church and every single sacrifice Pastor Ron Hope and their entire team have made over the years and you for being a part I understand the nature of the human condition and nobody is so saved that they are unemotional. There are many people here, perhaps those who are watching who will say, I don't know you. Pastor Ron is my pastor, Pastor Hope is my pastor and amen to that. They're amazing, wonderful people. But if you will look at my wife and I with the eyes of the spirit, you will see that we come with no motive other than to lift up the name of Jesus and build this local church. We're not searching for a platform. We had one before we got here and we submitted that to God. We are here because we are called here. And we're gonna bless the name of the Lord with everything that we do. And we will honor God and build this local church to be multicultural, multi-generational, with multiple commitments to this local community. 
And I pray that you will give us an opportunity to share and show our heart for you, your family, this community, this church, and that you will find yourself as a part of this vision. And on this Mother's Day, I want to give a great deal of honor again to every mother who's here and are overflowing those who are watching online. On behalf of Pastor John and Aventure Gray and the entire Relentless Church family, happy Mother's Day and a great God bless you. John chapter 2. While we have honored rightfully my mother-in-law from Dothan, Alabama, Mrs. Bonnie Cotton, my beloved wife, who has given me two children and gave me two children in 11 and a half months, Avon to Gray, I want to give honor to my mother on Mother's Day. 75 years young, two-time cancer survivor, the devil can't kill her. God keeps healing her. Thank you. Whatever I am is because you prayed me through it. And on this Mother's Day, I hope that this is the best Mother's Day gift you could receive. That you see your only son take leadership of a church with his wife and his two kids. John chapter 2. I'm reading from the New King James Version. I have so many family and friends here, people that mean a great deal to me, and I don't have enough time to honor every person individually. I do want to take a couple of moments to honor all of my family. We got my family. My cousin Justin and his beautiful fiance are here from Atlanta through Dothan. Jeff and Victoria Dowd are here and their daughter, my niece, Brianna. I love you. My brother I've known 20 years, LaShawn Daniels, is here. His beautiful wife, his son, his family, my brothers. To my brother and sister, a legend in the world of music and entertainment, hip-hop, Bum B and his wife, Queenie, are here. Came in from Houston to surprise me. Thank you, brother. James and Gila, we love you. Thank you for being our friends. John chapter 2, these are the words that are recorded on the third day. Some about the third day, Pastor Brandon. Something about the third day. Tamara, the third day. Somebody say the third day. Good things happen on the third day. There was somebody that got up on the third day. I'll save it for Easter, but you heard of it. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now, both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of the top shelf, <laughs> just wanted to see how many unsaved saints I got in the room. I wouldn't know. I drink soda and sweet tea. That's Holy Ghost. And grape Kool-Aid mixed with lemonade. When you put that grape and that lemon together with a five-pound bag of sugar, <laughs> the whole... <laughs> and when they had run out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, Turn up. No, <laughs> She said, they have no wine. Jesus said to her, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? Now, you could tell right there that Mary and Jesus were white. Because <laughs> black kids don't talk back to their mama like that. My hour has not yet come. Jesus' mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were set there six water pots of stone, according to the manner of the purification of the Jews, containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water. 
and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom and he said to him, every man at the beginning sets out the good stuff. And when the guests are well drunk, <laughs> then the inferior, you've kept the top shelf, high quality, good wine until now. This beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. This is a story about submission and honor and deference and order. This is the story of a king who still submitted to his mother. This is a story that has multiple layers and it is fitting on this day that I preach from the subject heading, Mama's Boy. Mama's Boy. There are many things that we know about Jesus. We know about the miraculous conception that Mary had not been intimate with any man and that which was conceived in her was of the Holy Ghost. And so it was the egg of Mary, but the seed of the Spirit. And he was born as a result of prophecy. The lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. So filled with power was this baby that in the womb, when he got close enough to his cousin, John the Baptist, who was in Elizabeth's stomach, John the Baptist got filled with the Holy Ghost in the womb. Now you know you got power when you can be in the stomach and people get filled with umbilical fluid and speaking in tongues. <laughs> when he was born, his birth was announced by angels in a field to shepherds at night. Wise men showed up from the east bringing gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Simeon and Anna declared and prophesied that this is the consolation of Israel. So anointed was the moment that Simeon said, now I can die in peace, knowing that I've seen the Lord's Christ, the consolation of Israel. You know you are a prophet when you say, God, I'm not going to die till I see your promise come to pass. Anna was a prophet and a widow of 80 plus years. All she did was pray and sit in the temple. And when she saw this eight-day-old baby, she said, this is the Christ. And so the Bible says in Luke 52 that Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. And by the time he was 30 years old, he shows up at the Jordan River to be baptized by John. And when he comes out of the water, a voice from heaven declares, this is my son, 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 son in whom I'm well pleased. But in this scripture, we find something very interesting. Jesus is at a wedding. His disciples were with him. He's at the wedding. Turn up. I got my boys with me. They're partying. They're in there. The wedding band is playing. They're in there doing the electric slide. The bride has already thrown the flowers. People fought over them. The garter belt has been tossed. The wedding cake is being cut. And in a Middle Eastern society, a wedding feast was a significant moment, not only of celebration, but of community. And it also had political, long-term family and business connotations. And so the worst thing that could happen at a wedding is you run out of wine because it means that you didn't have enough money to start or finish what you started. And so, they've been turning up for a while and somebody comes up to Mary and was like, um, we ain't got no more wine. Could you talk to your son? I know about your son, I need you to 
telling him to do something. Mary then goes to Jesus, the unique son of God. And she asks him, she didn't ask him anything because when you're a mama, you don't got to ask. Can I get an amen? She just walked up, said, they don't have no wine. And his response was very Jesus-y. Woman, it is not yet my time. And she looked at him and said, whatever. Whatever he says to do, do it. Don't play with me, Jesus. Here. <laughs> when Jesus is your son, you have confidence. <laughs> Imagine the conversations Mary had with other mothers. You know how parents like to brag on their kids. <laughs> You couldn't brag with Mary. <laughs> Somebody with Mary. Yeah, Mary, you know my son, he got an A on his test. Yeah, my son wrote the test and made the universe. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> they over there in the Sea of Galilee. You know, Mary. My son came in first place in the swimming competition. Oh, that's nice. My son walks on water. Did your son do that? Didn't think so. Boop, boop, boop. And mute. Jesus was minding his own business at the wedding when his mother pushed him into destiny. There's something about a mother that can see what their children can be. Something about a mother that even if the world can't see it, you can see it. No matter how many times your children have disappointed you, you have not stopped loving them. You keep praying for them. Some of y'all have bailed your children out and let them come back in your house. You were mad as fire. You, I, can't, I did not raise you to act like this. Did they hurt you in there? because I will kill somebody for my baby. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I love my wife, but if anybody messes with one of them two gray babies, it's a whole nother woman come out of there. Where are the other women that you save until it come to your kids? Stand up if I'm talking to you. You love God, but if they mess with your baby, they gonna get your before Christ. Where are they at? Where are the women at? Love Jesus. But when they mess with your baby, because there's something about a mother that is a nurturer, that is a protector, that is a caregiver. Y'all have supernatural strength, supernatural wisdom. When I fall, if you fall on the ground and you hurt your arm, the daddy be like, get up, boy, ain't nothing wrong. Just put some dirt on there. You'll be fine. Go outside. The mother's like, hush, Herman. He's crying. Come here, baby. You done got Neosporin, seven Band-Aids, Robitussin. You got... Uh, vinegar, honey, lemon, cod liver oil. Y'all done cured cancer from what's in the cabinet. God has given mothers an ingenuity to create an atmosphere of peace from pain. Mothers have an undying devotion and love to their kids, and nobody knows a child like their mama. Can I get an amen from somebody? Mary understood, yes, this is the unique son of God. Yes, he got disciples, but he is also my baby. And right now, I need my son to honor me. Children, obey your parents, for this is right. This world has changed. We don't honor our parents like we should. We got... We got a new society now that tells parents, just why don't you just lay off your children and just let them figure it out on their own? What are you talking about? Just let them learn, let them explore. Let them figure it out for themselves. 
You're going to let your kids explore traffic? You're going to let them explore Clorox? Go on, drink that. See what that do to your lungs. Bet you won't do that no more. Stop listening to these psychologists and psychiatrists who are not filled with the Holy Ghost trying to tell you how to raise your kids. God didn't give them kids. He gave you kids. Listen to the Holy Ghost on how to raise your kids. Stop lending your children to institutions that are not an extension of your value system. Got all of these godless teachers and educators saying all of this crazy, wicked stuff, and then you wonder why your kids don't love God, and we don't pray enough with them, and we so busy working and trying to climb an invisible corporate ladder that by the time we get home, we're too tired to help them with their homework, too tired to find out who they talking to, what they're watching, what they're listening to, and I bind that devil, and I bind that spirit of corporate ladder climbing. The most important thing in your life is raising godly children. I need a 10 second praise break in here. I said a 10 second praise break. We don't understand the value of our children because they get on our nerves. <laughs> she was like, amen. Anybody else, your children get on your nerves. You love them, but they get on your nerves. Watch this. How many of y'all have a jewelry box at your house? Let me see. How many of y'all have a, a safe or a place that you keep your valuables? Where is that? Isn't it funny that we protect things that are temporary? But leave our children open to whatever. Let me tell you something. I heard things have changed since I was a little boy. I heard now there are kids that can actually talk back to their parents. But honey, that's new. I wish when my mama said, get up, it's time to go to church. I wish I could get out of my mouth. I don't feel like it. By the time I said, I don't feel... <laughs> I can't find my lip. <laughs> you. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know what came over me. Forgive me. I don't, I don't even know what I was thinking. I heard there are parents that don't want to confront their kids because their kids are now big. They taller than them. Got a little baby mustache on. I don't want to upset them. What? I wish I would ever be afraid of anything I'm raising. If you live in my house, you sucking up my air conditioning, drinking my Kool-Aid, eating my food, watching my cable, you better honor me. You better, ain't no locked doors. You better leave that door open. Who you talking to on that phone? That ain't your phone. That's my phone. You don't have a bedroom. This is my other bedroom. You ain't paying no rent, gas and electric, no car note, no insurance. Everything you got belongs to me, little naked boy. I'm going to send you to school with two socks on and some drawers. Don't you ever be afraid of somebody that you raising. So what, he got a little baby mustache. He's 14. He can still get a belt. That's the problem with society today. You worried about what the suburban folk gonna say. Oh my gosh, you spank. Yeah, I got beat often and I'm fine, thank you. Anybody else got a belt and you better for it. I need some amens. If you ever got a switch, a belt. I'm talking about when you cry, you couldn't even get it out. <laughs> And 
I'm not talking about abuse. I'm talking about biblical correction that saves your soul from death. I've been around. I've seen the timeout kids. I see them at the mall. You have too. You've seen the parents. Cody, simmer, simmer. Cody, simmer, simmer. You're not simmering, simmer. Do you want a sad face? Simmer. He done broke pottery, scribbled on, on the walls, ate crayons. But then there's another mother on the other side of the store. Them kids standing right next to, don't you move. I wish you would move. Stay. You, try me, try me. But I want to touch a toy. Can you pay for the toy? Shut your mouth. Stay Say something. I want you to say something. Please say something. Please say one word. When you get these eyes, it's over. <laughs> Trying to make me come up outside of myself. Help me. Just... <laughs> this society has diminished the value and the sacred nature of parenting. But the Bible tells us not to let our children go. And we must defy the westernized notion of child raising that says when they turn 18, they're no longer your responsibility. I won't get a lot of amens but you've been listening to something that ain't the word because the word doesn't say when thou turnest 18, thou art grown. You're grown when you understand responsibility, biblical authority, integrity, character, when you're able to ha handle yourself, pray in the spirit. When, and if you're a young woman, you stay under the covering, ideally of your father and mother until such time as the right man comes along with all of his teeth and good credit to bring you to a better situation than the one you were currently in. We don't play these games where we just let our kids date. I'm not letting my daughter date just for fun. No, y'all can't go out. No, you can't slow dance. No, you can't kiss. No, y'all not going to no darn hotel after the prom. I bind that devil. You better be home. What time is prom? Eight. Be home at 830. We have given the world too much authority over our children. And that's why we're losing a generation. That's why they don't love God anymore. Because we make church optional, but school mandatory. Let them sit up and play video games all day through the service. Then wonder why they ain't got no Holy Ghost, but they can give you every rap lyric to their favorite artist, but couldn't pray themselves out of a wet paper bag. There's something about a mother that has the ability to speak to destiny. In this scripture, we see the eternal authority that God has given to mothers. Mary said to Jesus, they don't have wine. The connotation was, do something. And when you're the mama, you can say that. Jesus said, it's not yet my time. Nobody that I've ever heard preaches on this part. He said that, but then he had to obey because he was still submitted. He was 30 years old. So don't tell me that they, don't, they get to stop listening at 18. If your mother has wisdom, you better listen. Some of y'all right now, oh, the relationship didn't work out because you thought you was grown enough to see it, but your mama told you, don't do it. I'm telling you just something about him, something about her. Can I get an amen from somebody that'll tell the truth? Your mama told you, leave him alone, but you wanted him, and then you got him. Then you're mad that you got him. Now you got kids that look just like him. Had you listened to your mama? 
And it's funny because some of us miss our miracle because it's not packaged the way we think it should. Well, we go for what looks good instead of what is good. He got a little edge. He a little roughneck. He a little thuggish. I like that. Really? But the one who goes to work every day, got a good job, honors his mom, but maybe he doesn't dress all flashy and he don't get all of the celebration, but that's the one that's going to be faithful, raise them kids, love you right, take you on vacation. He'll pray for you, rub them corns when you get off work. Jesus is the son of God, but he still had to listen to his mama. There were six water pots. And I want you to know that he turned water into wine, but you need to understand the significance of this. Because water and wine means the wine is diluted. Is that correct? Am I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> Don't drink. I've, I wouldn't know. But there are two things you need to make wine. Grapes and thyme. Jesus had neither. I'm getting ready to preach it, elder. Can I talk to the elders for a minute? As the pastor now, I get to prophesy on Mother's Day that we are in a Cana of Galilee miracle moment because what Jesus did is he, bought, he created out of nothing the best wine ever. Now, I know this that there are certain bottles of wine that can cost up to twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 because of how old it is and the type of grapes used. We know that wine is a covenant drink because in Genesis 14, Melchizedek brought Abram bread and wine. We know in Revelation 19 that the first thing that we have is the wedding feast of the Lamb where we will drink new wine in the kingdom of God. Before Jesus died, he said, this is the new covenant in my blood. So we understand that wine is a covenant drink. And what Jesus was doing at this moment at a wedding, which is a covenant ceremony, was declaring that anywhere that there is a covenant, I have the authority to accelerate miracles. They missed it, LaShawn. Did you hear what I said? It takes years to create what Jesus created in moments. How many water pots, Pastor John? Six. What's the significance? On the sixth day, God created man. And so Jesus used a creative miracle, the top of human ingenuity. Well, why water? Because the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters at the beginning of Genesis because it was a creative miracle. The mother of Jesus told Jesus to move, and he moved in the authority that he had from the beginning of time. I want you to know, for parents in here, don't stop praying and declaring over your children. Doesn't matter how old they are, doesn't matter what they've done, doesn't matter what they're struggling with, but if you have the guts to speak it, God has the authority to bring it to pass. Jesus had water and no time. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the water. And God said, let there be light. So Jesus said, just fill the pots with water. Then he said, draw some out. So by the time they did their part, Jesus had already done his part. A part that takes years, he did in seconds. I am here today on Mother's Day to prophetically declare that we are in a moment of supernatural acceleration. And Relentless Church is about to see exponential growth. And what would have taken years will take moments. But not just the church, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to tell you that if you're here this afternoon... Woo! You walked in with some things that had been lingering in your life. Jesus has just declared a Cana of Galilee miracle over your life. And that which has been held hostage has to show up. Oh my goodness, right now. 
and what took years will take weeks. And what normally takes weeks will take days. And what normally takes days will take minutes. Your finances have just accelerated. Your business has just accelerated. Your marriage has just accelerated. Your children have just accelerated. Your destiny has just accelerated. Your dreams have just accelerated. You have stepped into an accelerated destiny because you have submitted to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Now I need some loud mouth and sanctified hands to give God a praise. I need you to give God a praise in here. Pastor Daniel, I need somebody to give God a praise. You have stepped in to an accelerated destiny. If you believe that you're in the spirit of acceleration, I dare you to start moving your arms like you're running. While your legs are standing still, you're moving. While you're standing in your seat, God is moving, shifting, repositioning, acceleration in every area of your life. Dreams come forth. Businesses come forth. Houses sell. Houses sell. Houses sell. Land come forth. Down payment come on. Every need of your family met. Healing come forth. Liver be restored. Kidneys be restored. Pancreas be restored. Diabetes get out of here. Meniscus healed. ACL healed. Arthritis gone. Vision restored. Deaf ears open. In the name of Jesus. Accelerated destiny. Stay right there because people are sowing into this word. Listen to me. The miracle that Jesus gave Pastor Aventer wasn't for him. He obeyed his mother, and in doing so, he preserved the honor of his family. Wow. What he did kept a family from being embarrassed and shamed. God's about to do a miracle in your life so significant that it will impact your entire family. Listen to me. Cousins you don't even speak to are going to get saved because of what God's about to do in your life. The relationship between you and your sibling that's been very frosty is about to warm up real quick because of what God does in this season. It's Mother's Day, and this is a moment of supernatural acceleration. This is a day of covenant where Pastor John and Abbott are covenant to pastor this church and be in relationship with you. And we will stand in the gap. And we will fight for you. And we are committed to you. And if you walk with us, you're walking in a place of accelerated destiny. Jesus had water, no grapes, and no time, and turned it into the greatest wine ever made. I don't know who this is for, but whatever is in your hand is enough for the miracle that's coming. Watch this. Some of y'all said, I don't have nothing. Perfect, because neither did he. But he's got all the power. All he needs is an empty vessel. There it is. All he needs is an empty vessel. All he needs is an empty vessel. All God needs is an empty vessel. All God needs is an empty vessel. I'm about to end. Jesus asked for one thing. He said, somebody get me some water. Fill it to the top. Jeff, why water? You don't put water in wine. I need water because water is symbolic of the word. Just get me an empty vessel and fill it with the word. 
God says, if you can find your promise in his word, he's going to bring it to pass before the end of this year. Listen, and that's actually given too much time. He's probably going to do it before the end of this month. But I need faith to rise. If Jesus can make vintage wine in two minutes, what can he do with three or four days? Five, six, seven days. I need somebody. Jesus. But here's the thing. Mary said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. I don't know who this is for. Everybody wants the miracle. But are you going to do what he asked you to do? What he's saying is you do the natural, I'll do the super. You go get the pot. You get the water, I'll turn it to wine. You fill out the application, I'll talk to the supervisor. You walk around the house, I'll give you the. You do your part, I'll do mine. You go touch the car, and I'll give you the. Put your hands on where you're sick, and I'll take it from there. Tell somebody he'll take it from here. Tell somebody he'll take it from here. Tell somebody he'll take it from here. Brandon. Tell somebody he'll take it from here. Tell her, stay right there. Tell her, come here. I don't know what you gave, but this is pressed down, shaking together, running over. You'll never be able to outgive God. Never. You'll never be able to outgive God. Never. Pressed down, shaking together, running over, shall men pour into your bosom. So she just graduated, and you know graduates don't have a lot of resource. So whatever she just put down just got multiplied back into her hand. Pressed down, shaking together, running over. Accelerated destiny. I know it's time to go, but this is history. Y'all gonna have to excuse me while I prophesy over my church. I declare that every family is about to walk into the greatest season of your life. I declare that miracles of healing, miracles, signs, and wonders will begin to break out in your life. And the people that have hated on you will have to stand by and watch as God accelerates you, as God elevates you, as God lifts you. We have liftoff. Houston, we have a promise. We have liftoff. We have liftoff. Relentless rocket off the ground, in the air, lifting up Jesus. We lift up the name of Jesus. We bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Accelerated destiny. Jesus submitted to his mom. He honored her, and he ended up producing a miracle that changed the fortunes of an entire family. If you are here, it's not because you just chose it on your own. God drew you here. I said God drew you here. And now miracle signs and wonders shall follow you. Some of y'all going to feel like that song. I always feel like somebody's watching me. But the Bible says goodness and mercy show. You're going to walk to your car and the blessing of God will be following you. You're going to get home. The miracle will be in the house. The atmosphere in your house has changed. The texture of your marriage has changed. Your children who didn't want to do right going to be like, hey, Ma. Hey, can I go to church with you next week? Don't tell me what God won't do. My wife prophesied that people are going to walk to this altar and lay down drugs. 
paraphernalia, weapons, places of addiction, opioids, they coming. Matter of fact, the altar is open if you want to get free right now. If you want to give your life to Jesus, come on. If you want to get free from bondage, come on. If you are here, you've never accepted Jesus, or you need to rededicate your life to Jesus, or you want to become a member of Relentless Church on our first Sunday. Give your life to Jesus, rededicate, or join. I want you to meet me at this altar on the count of three. One, two, three. If you know you're supposed to be a part of this house, this move of God, Look at that. Oh, come to the altar. Your father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So come to the altar. The father's arms are open wide. Born with the precious Oh, we still come to and Oh, come to The altar His arms are open Oh, forgiveness Forgiveness Was born with The precious blood Of Jesus Christ Sing it again. Oh, come to. Oh, come to. Altar. The altar. Father. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness. Walk with was born with precious the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to. Altar. The altar. The Father's arms are open Born with fresh blood, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I want to thank you for your patience. I know some of you have to go, but I want to tell you on this, the first Sunday of Relentless, that we're going to honor your time. But today was historic, so thank you for your patience. For those who are at the altar, whether to give your life to Jesus. Rededicate your life to Jesus or become a member of this church. I want you to repeat these words with me. Lord Jesus, it's me. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for the blood that was shed for me. I receive the free gift of salvation, not of works, but rooted in the blood and the blood alone thank you my life is made new and i declare you are my savior and my lord in jesus name amen we believe if you prayed that simple prayer you just got saved now for those who are rededicating and who are joining relentless church let me see your hands look at that even people in the art. Oh, hey, baby, did you want to? My wife wanted to ask the church something. If you were currently a part of redemption, we didn't want to just tell you you're a member of Relentless Church. We wanted to ask you and invite you to be a member of Relentless Church. So if that's you, will you raise your hand today to make it official that you are members of Relentless Church? God bless you. Your membership number will stay the same. Everything is the same. You don't have to do anything else but get plugged in. And we are so grateful to have you. We love you so much. I feel the Holy Ghost. Listen, 
If you all will walk to my right, your left, our team wants to get some information from you so we can stay connected to you. You're family now. You're covered now. You are loved here. We are going to fight for you. We are family. You can't get rid of us. Nothing but death can keep me from you. Me and Pastor Aventer are going to fight with you. Back to back. Bonnie and Clyde, you understand? We got you. Tell somebody we got you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord our God be gracious unto you. Show you his favor. Give you his peace.